Good evening on this Sunday, Sunday evening, Sunday the 6th of February of 2022. Welcome to my channel. My name is Rainer and this is Rainier Books. In my Sunday sum up, I want to talk about a book that I finished, a book, two new books that I picked up and four books that I'm currently reading and hoping to finish anytime over the next week or the next two weeks. And I also want to talk about the Olympic Games. Let's get started. I finished one book last week and the book is already back. I went down to the library, I brought it back and someone else can read it already, hopefully next week. And this book that I finished is a Swedish book that is called Tisalador by the Swedish journalist Diamant Salihu. Diamant Salihu has written a book, it's called Til Salador, which means Until Everyone Dies, and I really, really liked it a lot. I would give it five stars if I would give stars, and sometimes I do like this time. Salihu has done a very important work. He has written about a conflict that is taking place not only in the suburb of Rinkeby, which is northwest of Stockholm, actually about, I think, uh, 30, 40 minutes from here is an Inkeby only, and it's another world. There's a war going on then. And this is a great book because Diamant Salihu tried really to interview all the people, as much people as possible involved in that conflict, even the perpetrators themselves. He tried to interview the parents, he tried to interview the imams working in the churches, in uh, the Muslim churches in Rinkeby. He tried to interview people who are having their small business in Rinkeby and policemen and judges and everyone he could get really to form this build and to answer one central question. The question, of course, why? Why did this happen? How could that happen? And what is going wrong in Sweden? We are the country with the most the highest number of shootings in Europe, which is compared to the United States. Um, I wouldn't say a joke, but it's a limited, it's very limited number. I once looked up my, my favorite city in the United States that I visited twice, because I haven't visited so many cities in the United States. I compared the situation of Sweden and of Stockholm to, to Portland in the United States and Oregon. And I found out that in 2020, there were more shootings and killings in the city of Portland, much more than in the whole country of Sweden. So we're talking in different perspectives here, but this is a problem. This is a growing problem. And that's the situation. And Diamant Salio is describing this. He's not judging anything, but he is describing what can happen, showing us here in Sweden uh, how this came upon. And right now it seems that we don't have a solution and we don't want the same um, situations. Yeah, that was what I finished last week and I brought it back to the library. The other four books, I DNF'd, hmm, I'm a DNF'er again. I DNF Tokyo Redux by David Peace, the story uh, of the killing of a um, train company director in Japan in 1949. And uh, why did I do this? Because I think it was too long. I wasn't really immersed into the story and I wasn't so patient, I have to admit that. Maybe other people will love David Peace's work. It's actually a British writer who's living in Tokyo and has written a trilogy about the occupation and the consequences and follow-ups of the occupation of the United States in Japan after the Second World War. So I DNF that one, but I picked up a new one. And I did I DNF anything else? Uh, well, let's get to the, to the books that I'm reading now. In terms of uh, fiction, I am reading Brown Girls by Daphne Palasi Andriadis. I had this already last week up. Daphne um, Palasi Andriadis, she published this book in the beginning of January of 2022. It's actually the first book that was published in 22 that I bought and that I'm reading. I haven't read so much yet about 25%. Um, I like it because uh, she's, she's I, like I said last week, she's um, Daphne is, is describing in her debut novel a lot of, like the, she's writing in the we 
form in the first person plural and describes the life of brown girls, how brown girls are living in New York City. That is sometimes amusing and sometimes really um, gives another, yeah, another perspective that I usually, and many of us might maybe usually don't have on this world. So I like this book. I'm not totally enthusiastic about it. I have, um, what else should I mention? I read two more fiction books. The one that I picked up when I DNF David Peace's book, Tokyo Redux, was this one that I own. It's by Alex Olin from Canada, and this is called We Want What We Want. Short stories by Alex Olin published in 2021 in my favorite color, yellow. Yes, a yellow book. Ah, oh, so beautiful. I love yellow books. I read the first story, um, which is called The Point of No Return. And this story reminded me, it's about a friendship of, between two women. The story reminded me a lot about, of, reminded me a lot of Alex Olin's last novel, Dual Citizens, that I read and that I loved and that brought me to the author Alex Olin. So that is a story about a friendship between two women over several decades and also a story about mental illness. Um, but I carry on with this. Anyway, I liked the story very much. It's a beautiful story. The third book that I started, yeah, because I did F1 and I finished one, yeah. I started two, so I started two new ones because I'm, right now my formula is like read four books at a time. And the uh, second one that I picked up is a classic from 1989, a Booker Prize winner that everybody of you have all read it. I know I haven't read it yet. I have to do it, and I want to do it. I read the first chapter and the prologue. This is The Remains of the Day by Nobel Peace Prize, Nobel Peace Prize, by Nobel Literature Prize winner Kazuo Ishiguro from the UK, and also by the Booker Prize winner of 1989, his Booker Prize winning novel, The Remains of the Day, which starts in the 1950s. There is an English profession which is so English like no other profession probably on this planet, apart from being a queen, you can be, yes, a butler. A butler is so English, it's one of the classical stereotypes of England. And because it's also a dying profession in a way, already in the 1950s, Kazuo Ishiguro has taken it up, I guess, this profession, and this is a butler that is telling the story. He is um, on a great estate that was a state in an American way, a uh, great mansion living in an almost castle-like building with lots of other employees and he is the butler and his house is has been sold from a British lord to an American millionaire or billionaire. The things have changed drastically because this guy from the US, he doesn't know anything about British traditions. So then he says to the butler, uh, well, just go on a trip to West England. You have to take a vacation yourself. And this vacation is the, I think the, the plot of this story is a lot of around this vacation where the butler is driving through England to the West, to Cornwall, I guess, and where he is reflecting about his life, about the changes that uh, happen in England in the late 1950s. It is marvelously written and really by already only reading the prologue and the first chapter you already know that this guy Kazuo Ishiguro is a master of words, a master of language. And that's something that we as connoisseurs of literature really uh, love and uh, appreciate. It seems like a great novel. The fourth book, and now we get radical. Let's get radical. Let's get physical as a song, but this is Let's Get Radical. Radical ideas, we talk a lot about, and this is Black History Month, right? So I will read one book in Black History Month about the black history, about the situation of black and white and brown people, and this will be The New Age of Empire by Professor Kehinde Andrews. Kehinde Andrews, he is the first professor of black studies at the University of Birmingham in England. He is the one who established this studies, which is new, the first studies, black studies in Europe, in Birmingham. And this guy has some radical ideas that I can tell you. Um, this is really um, provoking, very thought provoking, and also sort of asking us 
to think of history in a totally new way. History was written, according to Kehinde Andrus, history was always written from the Enlightenment, from the White Enlightenment in Europe, from the 18th century, the modern thoughts and, and values that we have. But Kehinde Andrus, like also Ibram Kendi, whom I heard with his book, uh, Stand from the Beginning, I think two years ago or one and a half years ago, Kehinde Andrus and, and Ibram Kendi, they both have um, sort of shown us that the major thinkers, uh, major philosophers of the Enlightenment were very racist people. And I think that Kehinde Andrus goes a step further than Ibram Kendi does because he says all this is connected and in 1492, I mean, he says that, for example, in America, in the United States, uh, and in other countries as well, but a lot in the United States, people f celebrate Columbus Day as a great day. And there are cities even, like Columbus, Ohio. There are districts, like the District of Columbia in Washington. Um, cities who, and, and, and places and statues for Columbus, who was one of the greatest and most horrible mass murderers in the history of humankind. And um, the whole history of the white European race, uh, Kehinde Andros is, is telling us in this book, is based on the genocide against black and brown people all over the world, in the Americas, in Africa, then on slavery. You want me to hate my country? But that's not the way it is. It's just to get... To, to enlarge your horizon, to learn about your own history, the history of your people. And I don't hate my country for that. I just learn and I sort of broaden my horizon. That's what it is about. Not neglect when somebody comes with a provoking a new idea. That's not hating. That's not instigating for hate. So that was my plea at the end of this video. I just want to say one more thing. The Olympics have started in China, in Beijing, and I boycott the Olympics in China. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not participating in any of the competitions. No, no, I couldn't. I would never qualified, and I'm too much too old. Of course, I know, and I'm not working as a coach either. So, but but I boycott. I'm usually a very sports interested person, but I don't watch anything on television about the Olympics because this is hilarious. The Games, the Olympic Games, should have never been uh, awarded and given to China, to this country that is, um, I, I, and that's not about the individual people, but about the, the, the system that is ruling to this country that is systematically oppressing the people, systematically arresting, systematically torturing, and systematically killing minorities like the Uyghurs, uh, the Muslim minority in the uh, east of China, in the west of China, I'm sorry. So I'm not watching this. And I will also, because President Vladimir Vladimirovich Putin was one of the few politicians who actually traveled to China to support President Xi, who's, as you might know, who has been elected for life, a lifetime president. Donald Trump liked him a lot. And he said, oh, we should do that in the US, elected for life. We should do that maybe here. Luckily, the US hasn't done that yet. They might do it next time when Trump becomes president again, but I I don't know. So um, what I want to say is that I want to give you not a Black History Month list, but for Black History Month, get yourself a copy of, for Black History Month, please get yourself a copy of The New Age of Empire. For, for the, for the, I give you a little list, but in a separate video, four books you should read about China and Russia. So... Stay tuned for that video, which might come tomorrow. It will be short, I promise. And stay tuned to the channel. Read as much as you can. And uh, have a great reading week. And I hope to see you soon. Bye.